The last weekend of the full league season meant celebration for some, but that sinking feeling for others. Watford are among the tearful teams going down. Ours goes chairman Robert Chase after 10 turbulent years at Norwich. And from Anfield 89, we relive Arsenal's amazing late, late show. But Thomas charging through the midfield. Thomas, it's up for grabs now. Thomas, right at the end. And we follow events at Oxford United, where a packed house were at the manor ground to see if Oxford could get the win that would take them up from the second division. But we kick off at the bottom of the first, where the tension was almost unbearable for three clubs, Millwall, Portsmouth and Watford, all battling to avoid two relegation places. For Watford and Leicester City, the target was simple. Win and then hope. The commentators are Ian St John and Brian Moore. Heskey at the near post will be one of the targets. Indeed he is, but it was the fist of Kevin Miller that got it away. Whitlow again. Does well to get that one in. And it's gone in. And it's Isset. his first goal for the club and it could be a priceless one the lad on loan from Chelsea the ball bobbing about there and eventually Mustafa is it well I'm saying Brian that you can get goals from you know you put a ball in the box there's a lot of bodies in there everybody challenging and sure enough is it is there's a ball came back to mark the poop headed clearance out and bang not it in. bit long what's is there for Leicester now Heskey, this is a good break by Heskey, look at this for a bit of pace, and he's gone all the way through, and the keeper just does enough, but here's his set again, he does it up again. Terrific bit of play there, two excellent pieces of goalkeeping by Kevin Miller, and a great break by Emil Heskey. Leicester are into the playoffs for the fourth year in five, but after threatening to pull off a remarkable escape, Graham Taylor and Watford must now face up to life in Division 2. It, was all, it looked like it was always going to be a mistake that did it, and we're the ones that made the mistake, and we've got paid for it, so that's the way it goes. But we're delighted we've won, that's all we've done. We've just achieved uh, what people thought was an impossibility a couple of weeks ago, but, you know, we're, we're at miles to go yet. Ipswich Town were on course for the playoffs. Millwall needed a win to guarantee their first division place, but it went wrong for both sides. The commentator is Tony Jones. Williams to find Tariqo. Now Sedgley. Matthew again in some room. Here's Milton. Scowcroft on the end of it. And it's back off the post. James Scowcroft. The closest that Ipswich have come this afternoon. But it's not close enough. Good header by Scowcroft. And nobody able to get on the end of it when he came back. And look at this. It's the substitute. It's Neil. And in the end, it was Thompson who just managed to get a foot in. Yeah, Lucas Neil. If he'd have used his pace there, or perhaps he hasn't got too much. But he was clearly in behind Ipswich's defence there. Had he gone direct, his touch would have been better. Klaus Thompson was the man who put him off, getting back there and causing him to go a little bit wide on the right foot. Ben Thatcher, obviously, disappointment for you. Yeah, I haven't got really a lot to say. It's quite an adjustment. Uh, just one of the things, the worst moment in my career at the moment. Millwall are down because Portsmouth conjured up only their second win in 12. If he never scores again, teenager Dion Burton will always be remembered fondly for the eighth-minute goal that ended up making the difference. Terry Fennick's job as manager should be safe now. It's just unfortunate that certain elements of the support abuse the achievement with some disgraceful behaviour at the finish. We give a lot of goals away in the last few minutes in games like that this season, which has put us in this position. So hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully we can rectify it next season and hopefully not get in this situation again. Champions they might be, but Sunderland's achievement brought out the best in Tranmere Rovers, who saw their ground swollen to capacity and record receipts by the huge travelling support. And after Sunderland had missed several chances, 
Kenny Irons headed Rovers into the lead. John Aldridge is yet to taste defeat as player manager. He made it six games unbeaten as boss and 30 goals for the season as player. A defeat brought the curtain down on Derby's excellent season as well. Not that Jim Smith will be too concerned. His understrength side contributed to an exhilarating game triggered off by Andy Hunt's thumping shots. Nearly 24,000 were at the Hawthorns. Most of them were unhappy with Derby's equaliser. Paul Simpson was offside but not interfering. So Dean Sturridge could run through and become the first Derby player to score 20 league goals in 11 seasons. Richard Schnakers probably wishes the season wasn't coming to an end. The Dutchman signed off with his 10th in 13 games. Two minutes from time, one of Derby's new signings, Ashley Ward, equalised for a second time. In the summer, Derby could re-sign Dean Saunders. He looks set to come back after a year in Turkish football. But it was a West Brom striking favourite who stole the points. 60 seconds from the end, Hunt wriggled his way into the area. But the crucial touch came from Bob Taylor, his 100th goal for West Brom. Guaranteed third place, Dave Bassett rested several key players and it showed. While two teenage debutants were settling in, Norwich City's Sean Carey dashed down the right and Palace's David Hopkin headed into his own nest. If Crystal Palace make the playoff final, defender Gareth Davis won't be part of it. Five minutes from half-time, Davis bundled over Jamie Curiton, a professional foul according to the referee, and Davis was off. Nearly 20,000 squeezed into the Victoria ground, where Stoke's amazing home form didn't desert them when it mattered. Neither did the goal-scoring record of Mike Sharon in like a flash to volley in and guarantee fourth place. The fans were delighted. Ever the realist, the manager wasn't. We're in the playoffs. It's been a hard game for us today. We've been very nervous. We haven't played that well either. Uh, if we're to progress in the playoffs, we'll need to play a lot better in the next game. They've been in the top six all season. In the end, Charlton Athletic did just enough to make the playoffs. Here's John Helm. Lieben's desperately trying to find space in there against Eric Young. It's a real skirmish. There's Lieben, and it's got in! Carl Lieben for Charlton Athletic. His menace has been there for all to see. And from the corner kick, Carl Lieben rose above the Wolves defenders. His was the header, which was maybe deflected in right on the line. Carl Lieben takes the credit with his 10th of the season. And it's Charlton 1, Wolves 0. Now one for Glenn Crow to chase in company with Barmer. And Crow's created problems and balls in the middle. Oh, what a goal! Glenn Crow smashes the ball into the Charlton net from the most amazing angle. He battled away there against Barmer, and with everybody expecting him to pull the ball back for Steve Bull, Glenn Crow lashed the ball with his left boot and it flew past Petterson into the Charlton net, and Wolves have an equaliser out of the blue. Well, now that clearing header by Barmer has gone to Crow. Oh, and he's done well again here, Crow, and he's released Darren Ferguson, and Ferguson produces the save of the match from Andy Petterson. Charlton yet again. How many times have they come forward in this half without reward? Typical of their end of the season, to be fair. But just one goal could be enough. It's a good ball in. Here's Gary Nelson. Oh, how close can you go? Well, I think at the start of the season, we were relegation candidates. And I think up until the last six or seven games, we had a chance of going up. I thought we played ever so well today. I really wanted to win and win with a couple of goals. Just to end the season on a high. So we're going to the playoffs on a high. But I think the way we've played today has given us the right boost. Both these sides experienced life at the very bottom of Division 1 during the season. At times, both were strong favourites for the drop. If Port Vale had clung on to Tony Naylor's goal, they would have moved above Sheffield United. But Andy Walker maintained his end-of-season form, and after just one defeat in 14, United finished in ninth position. But for better home form, Barnsley's season might not have fizzled out. 
Regulars in the top six before Christmas, Danny Wilson's side couldn't maintain that momentum. John McDermott ran in on the blind side to put Grimsby in front four minutes in. Fittingly, Barnsley's driving force from midfield, captain Neil Redfern scored the equaliser. It says much for Barry Fry's style that only two players who began the season in Birmingham's team were still around at kickoff yesterday. One of them, Jonathan Hunt, laid on the first goal for Paul Barnes. Reading were level with a fine goal of their own. Mick Gooding almost crashed in one of the goals of the season. Lee Nogan pounced on the rebound. Having guaranteed their survival with a midweek win over Wolves, Reading made sure they'd finish above Mark McGee's new side. Jimmy Quinn turned in the winner. Luton were down, but it still took Oldham 84 minutes to breach their defence. Sub Stuart Barlow arrived just in time. The Oldham manager Graham Sharp hopes it will help him get a new contract. Sunderland and Derby were promoted last week at Crystal Palace, were certain of third. Stoke and Leicester won. Charlton's draw means Ipswich miss out on the playoffs after their nil-nil draw with Millwall, who are down. Leaders before Christmas, Millwall have won just twice in three months. They're relegated because Portsmouth have scored more goals and Watford join them after failing to beat Leicester. Norwich City's season ended in momentous fashion. Nothing to do with promotion or relegation, but the exit of chairman Robert Chase after 10 years. At 12 o'clock today, I sold all my shares in Norwich City Football Club to Mr Watley. Those shares could now not be in safer hands. Very sadly for me, perhaps my saddest moment, was at two o'clock today when I resigned as a director of Norwich City Football Club. It was what the fans had been demanding after a dreadful slide out of the Premiership last season and then Martin O'Neill's walkout to Leicester at Christmas. O'Neill claimed that Chase failed to come up with transfer funds. There had been good times for Chase at Carrow Road. Norwich finished fifth, fourth and third in the top flight and tasted the heady atmosphere of European football. But Chase took the rap for the departure of manager Mike Walker and players like Woods, Watson, Bruce and Townsend. But it was the sale of Chris Sutton for £5 million to Blackburn that broke the fans' hearts. Their bitterness was heightened by increasing financial problems and Chase's stubbornness to do it his way. He sold his majority shareholding to Geoffrey Watling, a former chairman, but it's still seen as the start of a new era. Watling's rumoured to be interested in bringing Mike Walker back to Norwich in the summer.